You have to be functionally retarded to believe that this guy, not only to believe that you can get free college, but that this walking Muppet who was washed on hot is the guy to do it? Are you kidding me? Here's something that raised my cackles. Bernie Sanders. Now, here's something that's important with Bernie Sanders. People often who disagree with him, we saw this a lot. They would say, you know, I disagree with Bernie Sanders, but he seems like a good guy. Good guy. And I used to think that until I, I saw the three houses. I thought it too. The three houses. And I saw, you look at some of his investments, you look at the way he's lived his life, he's a little hypocritical. But then you watch a clip like this, and you see that Bernie Sanders Just is a nice guy. Up. Until he's, here's something you realize, until he's with someone he disagrees with. And then you're, and then he's a dick. It sounds like a social justice warrior. A social justice warrior. He's like an evil guess who character. He's just like an evil guess who character. Is your person balding? Uh, guess. Go fish. I don't know what guess who is. Uh, I don't know what the guess who term is. I know you put down the little cards. But here's the thing about Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, you realize when you watch this, he's an ass and it's only because you never see him in forms with people who disagree with him. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. You always sort of thought Bernie Sanders was, unlike Hillary Clinton, he wanted to discuss a difference of ideas, and his ideas were bad. He very, very, very rarely went on forums where he would express those ideas. How often did you see him on Fox News? How often did you hear uh, Bernie Sanders on AM Radio? How often did you hear him it's giving true. press releases or give, granting interviews to conservative websites? Never. So it's really easy to seem nice. Well, uh, that train came to an end when he was at a town hall here uh, last night. I love this. He was confronted by a small business owner. And to those of you out there on YouTube who are mad that we trash Bernie, uh, trigger warning. My question is this. Um, I'm a business owner, and we just keep getting kicked in the teeth by this administration. It's regulation after regulation and tax upon tax. What Donald Trump does understand is the complexities of business and you know, to reward the person who takes the risk. So really, you know, my question is, this country was founded on entrepreneurship. Why is this administration so against a business owner? Please tell me. I don't think this administration, the Obama administration you're referring to, is so against the business oh. owners. When you talk about <laughs> the reaction. Yeah. Obama did, I don't know your income and I'm not concerned about your income. Pause, okay. Uh, I don't know your income, and I'm not concerned about it. Nobody is more obsessed with income, personal income, or corporate income than Bernie Sanders. It is all he cares about. It's what his campaign was about. It's what his signs were about. As a matter of fact, how much do you want to bet he is so obsessed with your personal income that the next statements out of his mouth down to the decimal are going to be about your personal income. Over under, roll clip, let's see. Obama did raise taxes on the top, the, excuse me, he raised taxes on the top one or two percent. Oh! oh! <laughs> By doing phenomenally well. 52% of all new income generated today goes to the top one percent. Ah, but he doesn't care about the income, right? I don't care about your income unless you're making one percent. Unless you're making one percent. And, and, and by the way, um, when we're, let's, it's important that we define this. People think one percent, people think two percent. What are you in, if you're in the one percent in the United States? Top one percent is at $306,000, joint household income. If you make that, you're in the top one percent. Top two percent is $192,000 joint household income, okay? You've seen us do this. And joint household income is important too. Joint household, joint household, household income, income is very important. Now, that's a good living. But in New York, LA, San Diego, San Francisco, you're not rolling in the Benjamins. So it's important. He's talking, when he talks about the top one, I think they've done too well, the top one and 2% in the United States. Um, it's important to keep that in, into context. Let's roll the next clip because it, it's relevant to this point. When you think about 90%, you don't think that's obviously too high? No. What I think is obscene, and what frightens me is again, when you have the top one tenth of one percent owning almost as much wealth as the bottom ninety. Does anybody think that that is the kind of economy this country should have? <laughs> I, love, I don't care about your personal income. This is the top one percent of the two percent. If we're taxing ninety percent, because the top two percent are making more than the bottom twenty percent. But I don't know how to go up percentage points. I'm fighting for the people. Okay. So he's saying he doesn't think it's unreasonable to tax the top 1% or 2% at 90%. $192,000 joint household income, you're being taxed at 90%. That doesn't sound unreasonable to you. That sounds like the people's revolution. You have several people on your block. I don't care where you live in the United States who are in that income bracket. This is why it matters. He's sitting down with a small business owner. And by, and, and, and by the way, he sidesteps the question. 
He always sidesteps the question. You'll see. Let's go to his next clip. You'll see what I'm talking about. So you and I may have a difference. But yeah, I do believe that billionaires and multimillionaires should be paying more in taxes. I'm a business owner. I'm not a multimillionaire. I'm not a billionaire. Okay. So there you go. Right away. Do we have another one of him talking about that? Yep. Okay, let's roll the next clip and then we'll hustle through this. Okay. I mean, you haven't lived until you put a payroll on your credit card. You know, I mean, this is the reality of, right, of, but of, I think of, so of the backbone of this country. Well, the backbone of this country, I think we should support entrepreneurship. I think we should support small business. How? But, 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 when have you, know, you ever, Bernie? But I am not supportive of large multinational corporations that make billions a year in profit and don't pay a nickel in taxes, nor am I supportive of those corporations who throw American workers out on the street and then move to China or to Mexico. What about this? This is the brilliant sleight of hand that he does, right? Top one or two percent, we've established that's one hundred and ninety two thousand dollars. One percent, about three hundred thousand dollars. You're top one or two percent. He's talking to a small business owner who is likely top one or two percent, especially if you understand how LLCs work. They act as pass through entities. A lot of people are taxed at individual income rates. A lot of people are making that much in gross. They're not making that much in net. Many people who you know who run small businesses, most small businesses, if they're a $10 million business, you think they're a giant business, they're not. They would be taxed at those margins, perhaps 90%, which wouldn't be outside the realm of reason for Bernie Sanders. But he sidesteps the question. He's being asked by a small business owner about taxes. So I don't know your personal income level. I don't care. So it sounds like, gee golly, Bernie Sanders is, he's so good. He doesn't even want to attack this guy personally. And then he immediately proceeds to attack the guy personally by talking about people who would be in his income bracket. But what he does is he sidesteps it. Here's a business owner in front of him asking him a question about me, a small business owner, what you want to do that negatively affects me, but the multi-billion and multi-billion dollar corporations. And what does that do? It makes you think that the top one or two percent is Coca-Cola. It makes you think that it's only the Koch brothers. It doesn't make you realize that the small business down the street running a Rite Aid or running a Taco Bell franchise falls in that top one or two percent. So automatically Bernie Sanders vilifies the wealthy, vilifies the business creators. By the way, people who have to, uh, this, this guy had a brilliant point. You haven't lived until you've had to put payroll on a credit card. A lot of small businesses who would be in the top one percent have to borrow money to make payroll so they can get inventory for the next year. The same people you want to pay your employees 15 bucks an hour. Yes. Those same people the have same to make people payroll. You want to pay Those ones putting the, the payroll on a credit card. Right. Uh, so he's vilifying the people who go out and take the risk. And he says, you know, with the, the 50% of, of the wealth have been put in the top one or two. But why do you think 50% of the wealth created has gone to the top one or 2%? They're the ones who are out there taking risks. They're creating businesses. They're employing people. They create jobs. Why is that a bad thing? Don't get so hung up on the percentages, especially if you don't know what it means. Good. A guy makes a, a, a household who went out, who, who used their savings. They bet it all on black themselves. Like this company, we employ 10 people. We would be the top one or two percent. Absolutely. Jared, Jordan, Edward, uh, Scott, Lacey, Francine, Courtney, Casey, Brodigan. We're top one percenters and no one's getting rich, but we would be taxed at that rate. We rolled the dice. I bet it on myself. And guess what? I'm able to employ people. So 50 percent of that wealth went to be able to make payroll for these people. And I didn't pay myself a dime for several years. Jared can testify to that. He was in my old piece of crap house. We broadcast out of it. Let's go to the next clip. China or to Mexico. What about the small business? I think we should be supportive. Is, do you think well, there's it, space to work with Trump on that? He's talked a lot well, about it, getting I, rid of regulations. But you can't say in general. What does that mean? Should a small business or a large business be able to pollute the water or the air? Or the food? No. I don't believe that. <laughs> and again, is it me? Is it me? Small bit. What about the small business? What about this man here who's asking you a legitimate question? Multi-billion, multi-billion dollar corporations. What, what, what about what about the fact that this guy has to uh, take out credit to make payroll? Multi-million dollar national conglomerates. Well, what about the fact that he's talking here? Would you support small businesses? Oh yeah, 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 sure. But what about air pollution and uh, poisoning food sources? The guy is so full of crap. He is so full of. Shit. And you people have bought it because he pro you have to be functionally retarded to believe that this guy, not only to believe that you can get free college, but that this walking Muppet who was washed on hot is the guy to do it? Are you kidding me? Bernie Sanders doesn't know what it's like to pay anybody because he couch surfed like a Burlington loser until he was 40 something and he suckled at the government teat and now it has three houses including a lake home. That's why Bernie Sanders can't relate to it. These are the people writing the legislation. Let's roll the final clip, really, because this is important. There, I don't pollute water, I okay. don't pollute food. However, when these rules and regulations come in to cover all of business, and you're starting, trying to start a business, 
it's tough enough in the Jim, I think we should take a look at it, but it's, you know, the devil is in the details. We've got to see what those regulations are. Some of them, by the way, may not all. It's Okay. Now, now all of a sudden, the devil's in the details, which we don't uh, fully understand. Really? You just went through percentage points as to who you could vilify and who you would tax 90% and whose stuff you would take and exactly how much they make. And the problem with the multi-billion dollar corporations, the problem with the multi-million dollar corporations, the air pollution, and all of a sudden it's okay. Well, what would you do to help small businesses? You do the lip service, which is what the left does. I, of course, want to help small businesses. How? Uh, the devil's in the details. What details? Uh, racism! That's what happens, and they hope that you don't pay attention. What details? The guy goes on to ask him, regulatory costs, regulatory burdens. What would you, you want to know what the regulatory burdens are here? I have this right on, uh, right here in front of me. $10,000 per employee for any business with fewer than 19 employees. That's $1.75 trillion in 2008 alone in regulatory burden. So if you're employing uh, 18 people, 15 people, you're paying $10,000 out of pocket just to cut through the red tape. Bernie Sanders, before he goes on his diatribe, which is entirely anti-business and won't function in the real world, says, well, of course I want to support small business. Really? How? The devil's in the details. Give me details. Uh, well, uh, some regulations. What regulations? Have you ever, in your life, Bernie Sanders or your ilk, found a regulation, found red tape. This is personal because I run a business and these people, their lives depend on it. LotterWithCredit.com slash mug club. Join or you're a Bernie Sanders supporting asshat. These regulations are stifling to small businesses. That's why they're leaving statewide. They're leaving states like California and New York for states like Texas or states like Nevada, ironically enough, with Harry and Larry Reed who got the crap beaten out of them in a shower because it's business friendly. So Bernie, you want to talk about helping small business? Help the, name me one time that you found something, you found this $10,000 cost per employee in a business and you cut it. Nimi, we know how you would like to tax the wealthy, the top 1% or top 2%, 192,000 in household income at 90%. But when it comes to, how would you help small businesses? The devil's in the details. How come you never give details, son?